So hello everyone. Uh, I want to start saying that I'm very happy to be here again. My name is William and I am passionate about innovation and technology with social costs. And today I want to share with you how to leverage a DevOps platform in order to deploy your Rasa chatbots faster. And I will start sharing a little story. When I was a kid, I was a big fan of Dragon Ball. I am still a fan today. I even have a blanket of Dragon Ball. And I used to watch this show every day. I even know all the dialogues, so I was an expert on it. And not entirely connected to my Dragon Ball likes, but relevant. My mom is a teacher for kids with special needs. And one of her students was also a big fan of Dragon Ball. And he was having issues learning how to read. So we started exploring the idea with my mom of how to use our as a chatbot to create reading exercise for this student. And the whole topic around the, the chatbot trivia will be Dragon Ball. So in that specific case, I could be the developer and also the data provider, let's call it like that, because I know Dragon Ball in and out. But to my surprise, by the time that I was ready with the bot, that I, when I had already created the dialogues, the training data and everything, the kid changed his interests interest and now he was only into Fortnite. And I have to say that I'm quite old millennial and I don't know what is this Fortnite thing, but my mom does because she is with him all the time. And then I realized that it would be better if my mom is the one who creates the dialogues instead of me. So what can we learn from this little story? That the bot seemed like a good idea, but we were too slow to deliver. And you can draw parallels from this story to market requirements. My example is one kid, but now consider the expectations and needs from the com competitive market out there. So one day I decided that if I wanted to speed up and put a chatbot in production faster and test the ideas quickly in a real setup, learning from real conversations, we had to automate some steps or at least release some burden from, from, from the developers. So, we also thought we have to outsource the content creation to subject matter experts. In this case, someone who knows about Fortnite or Dragon Ball or so on. So you are probably familiar, and I guess with, the, with, with this, with the Rasa CLI commands, and let me tell you something, they are your great friends. How many of you try this every day? You have probably lots of different terminal windows where you are running this over and over, training models, starting action servers, sometimes killing ports and so on. And if it's still today, you are doing many of these steps manually, it can lead you to errors and slow you down. But that's another problem. So actually we have two problems, how we can scale the training data collection and how can deploy, how deploy faster. And having identified that these manual steps are slowing us down, we saw an opportunity in how to improve and how to get faster with this. So it led me to this question, like how can we automate some of the steps and deliver faster. And the answer that I can provide today for you, my answer was, let's go on some adventure and let's use a DevOps platform in a way that we can deliver faster and focus on improving the chatbot, the Rasa chatbot, instead of all of these manual steps and other things that, that I'm probably familiar, that you are probably familiar with. And this is how the use cases start. So what was the first challenge? We wanted to enable non-developers to contribute with NLU data. And so we created a project that is called the Training Data Loader Workflow. And what is it about? First thing, English is not my native language, so I get very nervous pronouncing this word, so I will, I will call this the Google Excel. So we created a little script that pulls data that resides on this table in Google Excel and if you go outside and you ask someone, are you able to fill this table? Probably they will say yes. But if you say, are you able to fill some JSON or YAML? Good luck with that. And because in this case, we wanted my mom to be the one who knows the kid to be able to fill on this, on this uh, uh, table. So we say we have to automate and we have to create a way to collect the relevant data and, and NLU data from someone who is a subject matter expert. In this case, my mom. And then going to how does this looks in a workflow? Well, we came up is that we have to create two projects, one that will bring the data from, from, from Google Excel, and then we'll use this, convert it to YAML or, yes, to YAML or MD. And from there, train the model and follow all the steps that then will be uploaded to Rasa X 
server to serve it in production. And how does this look like? So here I have the, the, a group where it has all the projects that we are using in order to serve this, this, this chatbot. So here, this is the, the, actual, the actual project that we call the training loader. And how does this look like? So if we go here to the pipelines, we can see that I have executed several of them, but let's focus on these steps. So what we are doing is calling the Google Excel API, bringing the data, converting it to YAML. And then very interesting, we are using some concept that is called multi-project pipeline that what this is doing is now telling to the other project, the other repo where the Rasa chatbot resides, hey, we have data for you. So now that I brought it, please start all your steps of testing the, that the data integrity, that the format is okay, train, test the model, notify, give me, tell me the F1 score and so on, and put the bot ready for review. Because here we are, we are keeping a person in the loop and it's not automatically deployed to production. There is someone who has to read this to see if it's okay, if the, everything that was in, contributed is performant and then deployed to production. So this is how we solve the first problem of we need to enable someone who is not uh, able to, to, or it will take a long to fill a YAML, YAML file and make, let's make this person able to help us with training data so we can improve the bot and be faster, like in the story that I, that I, I was telling. So in general, in and CICD terms, what we are using is a multi-project pipeline that takes the data, converts it, sends it to the Rasa chatbot model, and then deploys to Rasa server. Okay, so that was the first use case. And now, the second use case that I have encountered is when we treat the model as an artifact. This is like the closest machine learning workflow that you can see today in the machine learning operation design patterns. And what is this about? So here, you can contribute data to the Rasa project from any source. It could be a, a branch that is created if you integrate Rasa XUI, the Google Excel, Jupyter Notebooks, or any IDE that, again, will, that besides the training data, you, may, you might change the config file, the domain file, or the stories, endpoints, whatever. Any of the things that you need to, re, to configure in order to train the model and deploy it. And again, how does this look like? So one of the things that we found is that the, this image below corresponds to one of the machine learning design patterns in how to treat a model. And remember that I was saying that the RASA CLI commands were your best friend. So one of the things that we have found is that many of these steps that are standard before serving a model, they are provided to you as a, as a, as a command that you can later use in these pipeline jobs and then automate the, the model testing and training. Um, I will show you in this project. So let's go back to, to our group. And now we'll show you the project where we have the actual RASA library, the, the, the chatbot. And if we go to one of the pipelines, like the one I was showing in the, in the slide, we can see here that it has to go through all of these steps and once we have it ready to review, we can come and see that following standard software engineering practices, for example, here I have a merge request that comes from, from adding that we need to add, let's say, more sentences to the natural language understanding data. And just as a list, for illustration purposes, we added one more sentence. So we can even see the diff uh, coming from Git. And then we can see the, the pipeline that was executed that is a yes, all of the steps passed. And what is cool from here, that before, before um, deploying the bot to production, we can click on view app and actually see how the, the, the environment will look like. This is an ephemeral environment where we have the bot client and the actual widget with bot here, and then we can try the bot from here. So at, before, before calling the, the, the bot and sending it to production, we can, we can test it here. So now here you can, you, can, you can imagine, that's actually a very cool joke. Now you can imagine that this could be a project manager or a product manager or a dialogue designer, anyone who would like to try and feel how the bot looks like, how it feels before deploying it to, to production. And one very important thing that I want to show you here is that following some other practices that we have observed, we have, we have uh, 
uh, we made optional that you can roll out the model server by different percentages, 10, 20, 30, that you could do what we are doing under the, under the table here is telling to Nginx or, or any load balancer that please put the traffic to only 10% to the new model and 90% to the old one. And while you are monitoring this, and if you are happy with what you are seeing, then you can scale up and deploy to 100% the, the, the new model. So on top of that, we are using other libraries that they automatically take the reports that Rasa creates when you, when you execute the CLI commands, and they put it here right in the merge request. So again, you can imagine that this is, there is a machine learning engineer, a chatbot developer, that he's saying, okay, I agree with this F1 score, so everything is good to go. So I mark it as ready, and this is ready to merge. And then the, an, another pipeline, the pipeline that goes super auction, will start. That starts here. This will take a while. So another thing that I want to show is that we were reading recently a blog post from Rasa in a project management template in how to deliver a conversational agent. So what we did also was to put all of these like milestones or steps that are part of the project management, and we are co combining with different labels. So if a project management manager wants to see what is the actual um, uh, progress of the project, they could actually do. So going back to our, our uh, use cases, now let's talk about the custom actions. This is one of the funniest things to do when to work with the Rasa chatbots. I will say that here, and if you are familiar with that, here is where most of the development resides for, for a chatbot developer, I will say. So because of that, this should also, of course, follow all the software engineering practices to make it robust and ready for production. So this, this workflow is very simple. From any IDE, whenever you change code, it will deploy a new container that will be then put in some pod in, in Kubernetes, and this is integrated with Rasa X server. I'm pretty sure many of you are familiar with this workflow. So how does this look like? So in, a, in our project, the action server, we wanted to model it as an independent project, as an independent microservice, let's call it like that. Here, this is the actual action server that runs whenever the dialog manager finds that the intent is to call the, the custom action server. And there are different things that we add here that I consider pretty cool. First, we use this library, Prometheus, for Python, that this gives you monitoring. So it's very easy. This, this is the boilerplate code that you get when you, you, you type Rasa in it. What we did differently is that we just add points, endpoints for monitoring. And for example, this custom action is gonna, is gonna tell you a joke. And what we are doing here is that every time that this action gets invoked, we can come to the project and metrics. And because there is, there is a lot of integration that goes under the table in this DevOps platform, so we can see already metrics of Kubernetes, memory, CPU consumption. This is pretty standard. What is very cool is this, at least for me, is that you can create custom dashboards or custom reports. And in this case, we are seeing how many jokes the bot has told. So today I asked like three times. So there must be one that I just asked in the other environment. And I, I can see here that it's showing me how many jokes has been uttered by each of the pods that are in Kubernetes cluster. So this is just to illustrate, but you can easily extrapolate this and think of your own use case. This could be, I don't know, a call to an API in a payment, si payment systems and some other transaction that makes sense to monitor in your in your in your use case. So what we are doing here is combining the out of the box template from Rasa to create custom actions and just adding monitoring endpoints that then we can take advantage of this integration between GitLab and Prometheus in order to plot this with those simple lines of code that I show you before. All right. So now wrapping almost wrapping up. I will show you the, 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 the last use case and the last workflow that I have also encountered that we like to call orchestrator workflow, borrowing from an orchestrated pipeline in terms of CI and CD. So what this does is that we have different data sources. Uh, among them, we have the API of Rasa X where you can bring conversations. And we have a scheduled job that this runs, for example, every, every Friday, every Saturday. And this will bring all the data from the different sources 
And again, as we saw with the training loader, it's going to pre-process it, making your life easier. You, you will have to make maybe small changes. And then this will be again pushed to, to RASA project. And then we will create another model and another custom action server if it's needed, if the, if the code has, has changed. So what is this use case about? When you have everything merged, everything is ready to go. And the last step that you are missing is to deploy. So here we assume that Everything was merged, all the CI was taken care of, and now you say, okay, Friday, let's deploy. And how again, how this looks like. So let me show you, let's go back to our project. And let me show you the chatbot orchestrator. So this one will take some time to run. So I have a little video for you that I will also share later. What we are doing here is that once this, this um, workflow starts, it will call two two jobs, the one that will pull training data and the other one that will create the custom action server. And then when these two jobs are invoked, so the action server will start. And here we can see what I was mentioned because the, the action server involves a lot of uh, regular Python coding if you are using the SDK from Rasa. So we are adding out of the, bo out of the box some templates that they do vulnerability scanning, security scanning, and, and you need tests for your actions and code coverage, and then they deploy to Kubernetes pod. But when it calls this other, this other job, the pool training data, this is then triggering the other pipeline that you are already familiar, that pulls the data, converts it, and then again calls the chatbot agent, and it's going to go through all the steps of testing the data is correct, the model was trained, it was tested, the, and and as, as I mentioned before, it gives us the option that if we want, we can we can increase the rollout by deep, by small percentages and then see the, the response from, from our end users. So this orchestrator one, it comes and is relevant in use cases when you when you have you have gone through all your approval processes, you have all your project ready to go, and then you just want to fire it up and trigger everything and deploy. So let me show you real quick how, how it looks like. I have a short video because the actual training and everything takes like 10 minutes. So I just took a little video with the relevant steps when I was running this pipeline. So here you can see that the pipeline starts building some little image. And from here, when it comes to this full training or as a custom action server, these pipelines get triggered. And once they get triggered, there is one step here, the one of the model that I will show you that I click on let's deploy 100% in this case because I am keeping myself in the loop. I don't want to deploy automatically to production. So here, if we see in, in Rasa X, we will see that the latest model that was active was from yesterday, February 9th. And when I click here in deploy to production, and then we fast forward a little bit, and I'm refreshing here um, the Rasa X UI, you will see that the, the, the model was uploaded and automatically tagged as active. And why, why was it tagged as, as, as active? Because I decided that I wanted, because I decided that the, the, the model was good enough, that the model was good enough based on my metrics. So I am happy with the result and then I can deploy it to production. So again, when we, everything is merged and we are ready to go, we can deploy, and this is when this uh, chatbot orchestrator pipeline makes sense. All right, so let's go. So to wrap up, I want to share two main ideas or conclusions with you, inspired from my story. It's better to automate as much as you can and focus on learning from real conversations. And when you achieve this, at the end of the day, you can deploy and test your chatbots faster and also put your ideas onto test. Like in my case, we were in love with the idea of Dragon Ball. It took us like two weeks. And when we were ready, it was already too late. This can happen to you when it comes to market requirements or time to market expectations. Mm -hmm.